Hi friends, hope you're doing great today. So today I'm back with my another tutorial on plugins in Dynamic CR. Plugin plays an important role in implementing complex scenarios and they have multiple implementations in Dynamic CRM. And as usual, in this tutorial, we would be covering everything about it. Like, what is a plugin? How to develop it? How to build it? How to register it? And what are its advantages in using it in Dynamic CRM? So let's discuss it from this perspective. Let's say you are implementing an implementation for a project in Dynamic CRM for a specific scenario wherein you have to perform multiple things. For sure, the things or the scenarios which I would be taking it ahead in our discussion could have multiple ways of implementing. That is, you can implement the same through using Power Automate flows. You could do it through workflows, but plugin still plays an important role considering its scenarios in there. Now let's say we have a specific scenario in there and the specific scenario is whenever we are creating this lead record, we want to perform an action of a validation that whether this phone number is there on the form or not. Now the simple thing could be you would be coming up or pinging me back hey Sumit we could have done it through a plugin or we could have done it through a JavaScript, a business rule, or even a workflow, why we need to use a plugin. The first scenario, why we should not use a JavaScript or a business rule, probably we can use a business rule, but why we should not use a JavaScript is that, plugin plays an important role while ensuring that everything which is going to your database is being checked and verified. If we would do it through a JavaScript, there would be scenarios in which this validation would be bypassed that say you are importing the records through Excel sheet. Since the user is not opening your form, so this particular validation will not be in place. Second scenario could be what if the records are being created through a API integration that is we would be sending a record or receiving a record from a website which is well integrated to dynamic CRM and in there whenever they are sending us the data we are not receiving our phone numbers in there and we simply want to avoid creating of all those records in our system because they doesn't have a phone number if you would have implemented this implementation using a JavaScript then again this will not trigger your JavaScript code because things are happening in the background in there and to overcome this challenge the another way of implementing or another discussion could be how about using a workflow in there. Yes, workflow could have been implemented considering the scenario which is very much easy. But what if it would have been a complex scenario wherein you need to perform multiple complex scenarios or multiple implications over the data. And to overcome or to fulfill this requirement of business, we usually go for an implementation using a plugin code in there. Now to develop a plugin code, we need multiple things, but let's first discuss about the architecture or the flow or the event execution pipeline of a plugin. How exactly a plugin works in there. And to for the same, this is something a diagram, a flow chart, which is visible to you all on my screen in there. And I would request you all to follow me, though I would be trying to draw few of the things in here, but I would request you all to follow with me with basic scenarios out in there. So usually what happens is, let's say your dynamic CRM, the one which you are or your power platform, which you are accessing would be a user interface, which would be somewhere here. Now everything which goes to dynamic CRM database, which is something located in here has to go through the web service. That is even the dynamic CRM user interface, which you see in here, everything communicates to the database through a layer in there which is known as a web service in there now let's say we are in here the first point in web service we are in here now whenever execution would start there could be three scenarios which can happen that is you want your existing code your plugin code to be executed before the main operation into the database that is before sending the request to the database or you could wish to perform the action or the communication or the logical operation on the on the data after the operation has been performed in the database 
and for the same we have two trigger points in dynamic crm for a plugin code is pre event and post event that is pre operation and post operation both pre operation and post operation are in the database transaction that means if you are performing some action and that action fails in whether pre operation or post operation every associated action to that particular transaction would be also rolled back in your database let's say i have a requirement that whenever a record is created the phone number has to have a plus 91 in front of it now let's say we perform this action in there and for some reason in our post event we come to know that plus 91 is not there in the phone number the data which has been executed or which has been triggered or which has been created in your database so if the post event throws an exception out in there what will happen is whatever the data which has been created into your database through this event will also be removed or will also be rolled back from your database and to meet up this expectation that we could have scenarios wherein we don't want the data to be rolled back or the operation to be rolled back from the database we do have an another event that is pre validation we call it it's pre validation that is any action which gets performed or which gets triggered or which is performed or which has been registered in pre validation of a plugin will not be rolled back it would be outside your database transaction now in our real life scenarios we do have operations in code which is synchronous and asynchronous synchronous means that is your main operation will wait for that operation to happen and occur let's say in a real time scenario let's say your database transaction while you are uh, logging into your account or your banking system so what happens is you do a perform uh, you receive an otp entire transaction of that otp or your validation stops till you share an otp which has been received over your text message if it would been asynchronous what will happen is the banking system would send you an otp request you would be having your otp but other things will fall apart and will proceed with the main operation and the same is some here in dynamic crm that is you have two flows synchronous and asynchronous if it is an asynchronous if a plugin has been registered or is an asynchronous what will happen is it would be added to a sync queue agent and then there would be a queue manager which would be performing all these actions in future based upon the availability of the resources let's say you have a requirement to send 100 emails every day in the morning to all the bank users or your application users with a morning message or with a daily quote out in there though it cannot be a requirement in dynamics but we are just creating a fake requirement in here now if you would register this particular functionality in application as an synchronous what will happen is entire user set who are using the application would be facing challenges while this application would be trying to send the emails to those 100 user because the resources the capabilities of the application would be diverted towards this synchronous operation but what if it is an asynchronous operation it will wait for the availability of resources in the application and once the available resources are sufficient then only this async operation would start performing in there now there could be a question hey sumit what if a post triggered plugin is being registered as asynchronous fails after 2 hours for sure whatever the data which has been created in the application would be rolled back because you are facing an exception an exception simply means that the code or the things which happened in that particular transaction would be rolled back out in there so this is a general cycle of a plugin so what we do is we need to have few of the things out in there to develop a plugin first and the most important is a requirement second and the most important is your visual studio 2019 with a 4.5.2 version of .net 
you need to have plugin registration tool you can explore that things like how to download a plugin registration tool and for sure a dynamics instance wherein we would be registering the code now based upon our requirement we decide which action or which would be a trigger point whether it would be a pre-validation pre-operation or post-operation out in there based upon your requirement we then decide whether this operation is synchronous or asynchronous and then we start doing our major stuff out in there writing a plugin is one of the easiest tasks in dynamic crm and i would be ex explaining you each and every step in brief out in there so now let's open our visual studio and i am opening my visual studio and it's on my screen in there the first thing which we need to do is we need to go in the new project now the project it depends upon your entire requirement at times what exactly happens is there is already a project which has been created by in your application and at times we need to create a project all together as a new project so i am creating a class library dotnet framework project dotnet framework project as a version of 4.5.2 i usually use let's try using 4.5.2 it's a long time i have developed a plugin right from scratch so probably we might need to update this version of dotnet out in there in our project so let's say class library project and let's name the project as youtube plugin yes i want to create a new solution and youtube plugin 4.5.2 i don't want to create a github repository for the same so i just created it and now it would be creating a class library project of dotnet framework for me and the project has been created in here i have selected so as to create a new project that's the reason uh, it it opened a new version of dot uh, like my visual studio else it would have simply created or appended the solution project to the same solution which which was existing on which we now let's start naming the things following the conventions which are there in dynamic crm so first usually based upon the project since we are creating a demo video so we are not using the concept of extended classes in there simply i would rename the classes let's say my requirement is lead record read pre-operation okay so I'm just renaming it and it will rename my class. Now to write the plugin, definitely you need to have all these DLLs added to your and for that I would be using the capabilities of our NuGet packages and the package which I would be using would be microsoft.xrm.sdk. SDK and this will help us so as to get all the required messages, required actions in their SDK core message. Let's install the same. There could be multiple others, but based upon this implementation, I think this would be more than sufficient. Along with this, I might need to include the messages part. Let's see how it goes in there. Let's uh, try to keep ourselves as spontaneous as possible. So my package has been added probably let's refresh it once okay now let's implement an interface i plugin so for that i think i need to add another assembly in here let's say microsoft.xrm.xtk Core assemblies has been added XRM. So it depends, like usually what happens is we write a base class and we use the capabilities of base class in our projects. And that's the reason it gets auto populated. Everything gets auto populated in there. We need not to define the class again and again. Now to write a plugin, what exactly happens is in dynamic CRA, we have to extend or we have to implement an interface out in there. Now, what exactly is an interface? An interface 
is something like let's say I press F12. So what exactly happens is this interface is the one which needs like the method has been def uh, declared. Now we would be implementing the definition of it. So let's start implementing this interface. And this is the interface out in here which we need to implement or which we need to define the definition to. Now in this implementation what exactly happens is the service provider is, is a parameter to it which is of type i service provider and i service provider will give you all the required information when your code would be executed which means when this code has to be executed what would be its trigger point what is in it's in context out in there what is the entity in there and even the service provider we would be getting it through here and using that service we would be committing our operation based upon our approach out in there so let's start implementing this interface the first and the most important thing is this part eye tracing service which i'm just doing it so what i'm saying is eye tracing service is a tracing service what exactly is this tracing service is a way which is used for creating the tracing logs of your plugin execution in dynamics application what exactly happens is eventually what will happen your code would be executed every time when a real-time user would be using the same in the production and at times this code might be failing for some reasons in that scenario for sure we need to create trace logs and this tracing service helps us so as to create a tracing log out in there now the second important thing is getting the plugin execution context context means the information when where and what like when this plugin is being executed when it has been triggered what is being executed and where it is being executed and what all the information is available out in there now if both these things like usually what happens is both of these things are common across each and every plugin and at times what we do is we implement a base class wherein these definitions are defined we keep on just using it consuming it from there now we are writing a plugin on a target entity and the target entities are lead entities so now let's say we would be checking what is the name of my target entity in there on which entity this code is being executed so for this i would be just simply writing including this scenario that is context the information of context has been given from here context dot input parameters dot contains target and target is an entity at times this comes as a target as an entity reference in case of an update out in there and then we would be obtaining the we would be pulling out the name of the entity for which entity is in there now if the entity is the one which on which we are implementing that is let's say if it is not we have got the entity name now what we would be doing is we would be checking whether the entity the one on which we are going to register is correct or not whether entity dot logical name is not equal to lead then simply return it don't execute my code further out in there so these are the few mandatory checks first getting the tracing service second getting the context once you have a context you have a tracing service from the context we would be getting the information of the trigger point of this plugin and once you have the trigger point then we would be getting we would be retrieving the context service or i organization service and the service of this plugin this would be used to execute to commit your code or your operation into dynamic crm database in there if you don't have this service like since i am writing a pre-operation plugin so we don't need this service but if it would have been a post operation we have to need we would be needing this and then comes our logical like whatever the logic we want to implement try and for sure we want catch catch would be always there could be multiple type of exceptions usually we use two types of action exception one is this um, fault exception another is our general exceptions out in there now for this probably they want us to implement some classes we'll implement the same and then we would be good 
So let's remove it and let's keep it like this. Now this structure of a plugin remains common for each and every plugin which you would be writing and all your logic would be written in here whatever the logic you want to implement whether you want to do a complex one whether you want to do a simple one everything in here now i would require like to share a brief about it that is the i service parameter of the execute method is a container for several services useful object that can be accessed within a plugin so in here the service provider this service provider this parameter contains a lot of information and the service provider contains instance references to your execution context i service organization service factory i tracing services and a lot now the execution context contains a wealth of information about the event that caused the plugin to execute and the data contained in the message that is currently being processed by the pipeline the platform provides the correct web urls and network credentials when you obtain the web service organization services now few of the you would be thinking here so much we are not mentioning any credentials to this service how it would be performing all those things we would be taking care while registering the plugin now how we use what we do so in dynamic crm every table is known as entity let's say lead entity equals to object of new entity type of lead entity for sure it's something you might have been doing in your plugins or in your dotnet code till so far now we have this code so i can mark it this out the lead one lead one now to the entity what would be the column to and what would be the value i want to set so let's go back to our user interface in here let's say whenever a record is created i simply want to set this particular the the heret the first name to be as uh, as sumit as in whenever a record is created so what happens is this first name would in dynamic crm has three values when this on the form which you are seeing is your display name then it would be a label and then the third would be a schema name so let's try exploring the same on the admin panel so i am now loading the admin panel out in there and then in the administration panel i would be like uh, sharing you the steps how you can get the schema name of it exactly every name that is either your display name your label can be modified can be changed by the user or the admin any time in the future but schema name becomes read only that is it it's the name by which this attribute is stored or is being named in your database so if you use the label or the display name in your code probably whenever there would be a change it would be impacting the functionalities out in there to overcome the sin we have to ensure that we are using the schema name of these attributes along with their data type so so i am just loading the admin panel so as to get the schema name of this attribute so now my admin panel has loaded there are plugins even uh, browser based plugins available for the same but i just want it to be of a beginner level so i am just doing every step in there that is i went to the admin section i went to the customize the system and it's loading every table out in there once we have the tables we have everything what will we do is we would copy the schema name from there we would identify the schema name and we have to mention the schema name in here let's say schema name i know its topic is subject okay and subject is of type string so we simply need to like create it through a plugin code okay now in here you can see i am not mentioning anything in there like i am not executing i am not doing any service call to a my database but still this will work all good reason for the same is i am planning to i am planning to register this plugin as pre event that is before the main operation so whatever the changes or the values which would be coming to my system 
to my application to my context i would be updating would be pushed to my database without any service call and <coughs> and that's the reason we use pre operation that is pre operation assist us so as to save the call to your database that is let's say you are performing an action or let's say let's take a real life example let's say you are just going to drop your son or your kid at your school or your daughter at its school and a friend of yours also ask you so as to drop their kids along with your so you need not to make an extra effort you need not to go back do a execute or commit to it it's simple you simply take that attribute value that kid and just simply drop it to the everything would be taken care by you directly so let's execute or let's build this plugin now there is an important thing in dynamic crm that is though you will build the code build has been successful you need to sign this assembly if you won't sign this assembly you would be facing challenges while registering the plugin in there so for that you simply need to go on this properties in here you need to sign the assembly signing and you simply need to sign it create a sign i usually don't create any password but it's a way of doing it new sign simply say abc something like that and simply sign it now if we would go deeper into it you can search on the internet it has various concerns various things which needs to be taken care but i am taking it as as like easy as possible now you have a build file i am i am sharing on my screen in bin folder in debug i have created see i have this dll out in there now our responsibility is we need to push this application in or this code in our application so let's open an excel and let's see where we stand and what are all the operations we have performed till now so my excel is there let's let's write all the points which we need to do is we should have a valid business scenario first thing we have a business scenario we decide to implement it is using a plugin to write a plugin you need a visual studio okay and you need to clear, create a class library project dot net framework you need to add the dlls to it okay implement the class the interface sorry once everything this has been done we will build the project and for sure before building we need to sign the project so i did everything now i have my code my logic all implemented and my dynamic crm application sits somewhere here <coughs> it sits somewhere here now for sure this code has to be pushed into our application has to be part of our application then only it will be performing its operation it cannot be sitting on your machine and you coming back to me hey sumit we created the assembly but it's not performing the application is not performing as needed and to create a bridge between this we use plugin registration tool and you can find a lot of videos on the internet like how to download the same or if you wish you can simply comment in the uh, in there and i can share the steps how to download the same now first and the most important thing is we need to create a connection and usually i create a connection and i say display all the list available now we we are connecting to our instance of dynamic crm usually this is a, your development instance of dynamic crm and then it can have multiple instances based upon your organization once it gets connected all well it will start loading the organizations which are available under your environment and we need to select the appropriate environment to which we want to push or upload this code out in there or this assembly out in there specifically saying so you can see my environment has loaded all well and yes all these assemblies are 
already in the application which are being offered by Microsoft because these are all needed so as to perform the operations. Now to register our assembly what we need to do is we need to get connected or we need to upload it. Probably I got connected to a wrong instance. Yeah, it's Q1. I want to connect to A1 instance of Dynamics CRM. It's a marketing trial. I want to get connected to a sales trial of which over which we are working. Uh, I have different instances. So this is the tool and this is how we get connected to an instance of Dynamics CRM. And once we are connected, we would be able to push this code into the application and we would be all set, all good to proceed. So I'm in my sales trial instance of Dynamics CRM. Now let's start registering my assembly first. So first thing is we would be registering our assembly. And for that, I need to simply go to this folder path that is debug, simply copy, simply paste the path in here and my DLL is available in here. And in here, my DLL along with my plugin, these things I would be explaining you in future, like, like why to use sandbox, why to use none, why to use database in there. Now let's select and let's push this assembly to the dynamic CRM. And yes, my assembly has been pushed successfully in there. See, my assembly is there. Now in this assembly, a single assembly, can for sure can have multiple classes out in there like let's say you have multiple classes lead pre-operation lead post operation account pre-operation account post operation so it's our responsibility to tell it to get set up a trigger point out in there and for that we need to register a new step so what we have done is till now we uploaded the code assembly to application my assembly is there but how would I know when to trigger what to trigger and for that we have to register the step so I am saying create whenever a record is created which is my trigger point pre uh, lead entity okay what would be the uh, handler so this is my create lead entity what would be the operation I want to perform in pre-operation synchronous because on create you uh, pre-operation it has to be synchronous and register the new step and that's all this is how we create a plugin we upload it into application and we register it as an step now let's try creating a new lead record and you will see the magic out there so I am just pulling out my CRM instance and I would be creating a new record. So I am I would be typing subject as something different. Let's say Sumit Gupta. Okay. And I filled every information using the same okay my code which has been we have written if it works well what will happen is this subject would be updated as created through plugin code and it's a pre-operation plugin so i'm not using any instance of service in here now let's try saving the record and let's see what's the output is the record is being saved which will trigger my code pre-operation create record and the output would be updated on the screen after refresh now the record has been created all well let's wait a while and then we need to refresh the screen because uh, this is a pre-operation plugin at times now let's refresh let's see what's stored in the database seems i messed up with the attribute out in there lead entity pre-operation Sumit Gupta let's go in here let's go in our default solution let's check the entity lead there is a plugin also but I don't want to do it that way I want it to be like sharing with you the right six steps lead fields 
and then we would be pulling out what is the schema name for our topic out there hi all like uh, the reason it was not working the pre-operation part because i have created a different instance of my an object of my table entity wherein i need to use this variable directly in here that is entity subject created through plugin so what will happen is whenever my, my code will get executed it will check it will check everything that is eye tracing services i plug in execution context context will give me the reference of my entity and then entity subject is created through plugin now i would register this code as my pre operation plugin that is i want it to be executed before the main operation and so in the flow if you can see in here pre event so whenever my user would do anything towards the user interface or through data api or through export services or import service everything will come to my web service the web service will check will send the request based upon my registration of the plugin pre event will get triggered and my operation will get performed let's try doing it on my screen so what we are doing in this code is we are simply saying whenever this code gets executed whatever the data user is sending on the subject attribute the schema simply replace it with this value and let's try doing it so let's say i fill it as x1 y1 z1 and let's save it see the record has been created and x1 has been replaced created through plugin and the reason why you why we use pre operation is it's saving my database call an explicit database call to our database now what if i need to write an another plugin which i need to execute on a post operation now there are multiple ways every developer has its own way of doing it we can use the same pre operation <laughs> plugin and we can add a condition in here but for our ease for today i am just doing it this way so what i would do is i would i have just added a new class i would just rename it to post operation post operation copy this rename it here so that you have a clear visibility and as shared i will simply copy everything everything from here because everything remains the same i i just want to give you a heads up like everything remains the same and that's my objective today and i want to resolve all this so using microsoft excel msdk everything is resolved everything is settled control k d now we are right writing a post operation plug so what will happen is we will simply write entity x1 equals to new entity of type lead okay and x1 and let's say we set up the job title but but to perform this operation what exactly happens is since we are going to register the code after the main operation so it becomes our responsibility so as to explicitly commit this operation to our database update x but for sure to update this what we need to do is we need to find the id also and this is how we write a post operation plugin because after creation of a record we want to trigger this code so as to perform this value and push it into our database and for that we would be using the update operation for updating anything even your your sql you need to have the primary record id so what i said is x1.id equals to entity.id i simply register it rebuild it 
we need to now use the same plugin registration tool so as to update this assembly updated the assembly and see now we would be having two plugins in here pre-operation and post-operation so we have used the capabilities of pre-operation already now what we will do is we will use the capabilities of our post-operation plugin now our post-operation plugin is in here simply go in there register new step define the entity message name create primary entity lead when you want to get it triggered post operation that is after the main operation now we have both the things synchronous and asynchronous usually on create we trigger an asynchronous operation so i am registering it as a synchronous operation now my plugin has been registered as a pre-operation and post-operation. Let's try creating a new record out in there and that will give us both the looks and feel. That is before creating, that is pre-operation, after creating, that is post-operation. So let's see why type in here. A1. B1, C1, and D, D1. So my code, now my two codes would be executed. Pre-operation, so as to update the topic, and post-operation to update the job title. And let's save the record. The moment it gets saved, the execution cycle will run, and see pre-operation plugin, and then the post-operation plugin. So if you go to the execution cycle and if we see in here pre-event will get executed first. So you are saving a database call, then the main operation and then the post operation will happen. Now let's say anything fails in our post operation. Let's say our code doesn't work well. You will see this record will not be created into database. That is the record would be created, but it would be rolled back as soon as the exception happens or occurs in the post operation plug. And that's the beauty that is it's in a single transaction out in there. Now, if you have a requirement to be done that even though there is an exception, the rollback should not happen for that particular action. Then what we do is we use the capabilities of pre-validation that is this thing is outside your database transaction which would happen before anything on your main operation so that if the main operation fails still you will be having a pre-validation now let's discuss it with a real-time example of ircTC now on ircTC website when you log in first you tra select the train number and it gives you a option so as to see the seat numbers and everything you book click on book then after book you get a you get diverted to your payment gateway wherein you perform the actions and once everything is done then a post then you get a confirmation so how does this everything will happen so pre-validation is whenever you would say book my ticket what railway will do is will create a record of yours in a secondary table in a prime in a temporary table and when you would be doing your pre-operation that is you would be entering everything in your banking credentials and everything if everything goes well they will get a token which will which in which will which they will pass to the post operation plugin which will update the temporary key in your id in your temporary table so as to give you a confirmed ticket so pre-validation happens even if your database transaction fails it will be in their system for a while or when if for whenever till when they want to hold it pre-operation and post operations are entirely dependent upon the exception if the exception doesn't occur it will store the values if it happens in there then for sure you would be facing a challenge out in there and that was still a beginner's knowledge for a plugin creation in real time examples in real projects we do a lot more than this we have base classes in there we have unit test cases in there we debug the plugins 
we have to like do a lot of things in there we have to create our getter setter classes a lot in there but for beginner i think it's all good for today and feel like i would again like to thank you all for all your immense response and comments on my youtube videos and please do feel free to share anything and everything you would like me to cover in my upcoming youtube videos thank you and have a great day ahead